Thanks for coming to this short introductory presentation on Crystal Structure Prediction, or CSP. My name is Jason Cole, and I'm the Senior Research Fellow at the Cambridge Crisp Graphic Data Centre. In the next 15 minutes I hope to tell you a bit about what CSP is, explain how it impacts in an industrial setting, and then introduce you to the CCDC Blind Test, which is a collaborative effort to help benchmark CSP methods in the community. Crystal structure prediction, or CSP, is defined as the ability to predict crystal structures that a given molecule will form from its molecular structure. Most methods of CSP will use informatics and computational science techniques in combination with intensive computational resources. Typically, we start from a 2D chemical representation of a molecule, build a molecular model, and then use advanced search techniques to generate plausible crystal structures that we can visualise based on their energy and density. Looking back in time, we can see the origins of this field. In 1988, John Maddox, physicist and writer, stated that it was a scandal that it remained generally impossible to predict crystal structures of the simplest compounds from their molecular constituents. Before 1988, there had been attempts to predict simple structures, such as benzene or methane, but Maddox's observation in a Nature editorial spurred a community to enhance understanding in this interesting area. Maddox had a point but we have learned a lot in the subsequent 32 years. One thing we've learned is just how hard a problem CSP is. So why is CSP so hard? This is best shown using an example. Here is a small molecule. It looks pretty simple. It has just four rotatable bonds and not very many atoms. Its chemical name is 5-methyl-2-2-nitrophenyl-amino-3-thiophene-carbonitrile. But that's a bit of a mouthful, and most people in the field of CSP just know it by its synonym, ROI. It doesn't on the face of it look so complicated to analyse, but the devil is in the detail. While the molecule ROI may seem quite simple, its molecular shape varies a lot, as can be seen from this movie, where the various plausible conformations of the molecule are shown in sequence. Of course, even if software can predict the conformation of a molecule observed in a crystal, we still then have the challenge of predicting how that molecule packs. We need to sample many space groups and unit cells to achieve this. We could generate a landscape of plausible structures and rank them on their energy, but the lowest energy structure is not always the observed structure. The other problem is that Maddox's original view to predict the structure was naive. We have to predict multiple structures, since we have multiple different polymorphs, stable and metastable, which form under different experimental conditions. Experimentalists can vary solvent, pressure, temperature, and indeed crystallization method to get alternative forms. ROI stands for red, orange, yellow. This is because this molecule forms many conformational colour polymorphs, each different crystal structure. Due to the chemical nature of the molecule, these vary in colour from purple to deep red to orange to yellow, depending on the molecule's planarity in the crystal. ROI has 13 characterised distinct polymorphs, but it seems the more experimentalists search, the more they find. Typically, a CSP study will give us a large range of possible crystal structures that have a low free energy and are densely packed. In reality, only a few of these structures are generally observed in amongst a large number of false positives. As a whole, the science has moved forwards in the past five years. There's been movement towards using phonon calculations, multibody density functional theory, and temperature corrections to improve outcomes in ranking by energy. These methods are quite computationally expensive, however, and so limited to a relatively small portion of the calculated landscape. The relative ranking is critical, as it gives us a means to predict the relative stabilities of different forms. So why does CSB matter to the broad community? The ability to predict the observed crystal structures of molecules would be highly beneficial. One problem faced by the pharmaceutical industry, for example, is in the area of risk. A novel crystal structure may be deemed pattern-breaking if it has better formulation properties or different solvation properties to the current commercial form. Another issue is the appearance of alternative forms can disrupt scale-up and manufacture. By using CSP, one can hopefully recognise whether risk exists, for example, if a computational form is found that appears more stable than the experimental forms that are already in use. CSP can be used to provide evidence to conclude that risk has been avoided and remove the need for further experimentation. On the other hand, CSP can be used to generate new ideas. 
The generation of unseen structures may suggest that a given form could be made that could be more conducive to manufacture. It can facilitate new material design, and of course, counter to risk assessment, it can actually be used for patent breaking. A famous example of the cost of risk is the structure of rotomavir. In this case, a late occurring polymorph that was thermodynamically more stable than the form being used for therapy appeared in the scale up for manufacture. It proved highly challenging to create the old form once this had happened. The cost was estimated at a quarter of a billion dollars in lost revenues. It's not an isolated case. Several examples have occurred since. You can read about them in this reference here. Further studies have suggested that even existing drugs could face future problems. Neumann and van der Streek used CSP to analyse this. They estimated that between 15 and 45% of all small molecule drugs currently are distributed using a seemingly metastable form. So how can CSB help here? Typically a CSB study will give us a large range of possible crystal structures that have a low free energy and are densely packed. The reality is only a few of these structures are generally observed. We can view on the landscape where the observed forms are in relation to the other predictions. Look at the red dots in the landscape above. Imagine these were the observed forms. The plot on the right would give confidence as the observed forms are the lowest in energy but the plot on the left would be a warning sign. There are seemingly unobserved forms that could merge that would be more thermodynamically stable. The other key usage is in new ideas design. For example, in this publication, Polito and co-workers use CSP to search for unknown structures with high degrees of empty void space. The application aimed to design compounds that be effective in gas absorption. The CSP landscape suggested on the left an array of compounds with low density that are also relatively energetically stable. This stimulated the experimentalists to try to synthesize the crystal structures. After some considerable searching, the low density structures were observed. Crystal structure prediction is currently a costly computational exercise. The investment of time and resources can involve costs that run to between ten and hundred thousand dollars for a single landscape. The elapsed time for such a study can be anything from two to three weeks to two to three months. Further, due to the computational complexity, studies are limited to molecules of a moderate size, though as computational resources become cheaper and more readily available, more challenging systems are becoming tractable. There are many challenges in CSP that are still evident. The force fields we have and even the faster quantum mechanical methods are not adequate to rank crystal polymorphs. To make progress requires the use of customised force fields for each family of problems and subsequent high-end re-ranking to make meaningful predictions. We have to accept that we generate large landscapes of structures, but many of these structures will simply never be observed. We over-predict. This confounds use of CSP predictions, as we cannot be certain if the structures we see could exist, or are just artefacts of the computational method. Finally, to move forwards, we need a deeper understanding of the crystallisation processes. As Sally Price notes, we need to move from structure prediction to prediction of structure creation, which is entirely influenced by the experimental conditions. Where then would we ideally be in 30 years from now? Well, we'd be able to take a very elaborate molecule, predict all its solid forms that could be made, including solvates, salts and useful coformers, not generate false positives on a small computational resource in the time it takes the research to go for a tea break. We'd then be able to derive a large amount of calculated information from the prediction. For example, how to make each form reliably. Quite a challenge. I'm sure John Maddox would approve, but 30 years may well be far too optimistic. The CCDC is committed to advancing structural science. We sit in a unique position as a registered charity, an active centre of research and producers of leading informatics software. We have connections to academic institutions, pharmaceutical companies, other software providers and the organisations setting standards in chemical data. So we can bring together all these different groups to test, compare and discuss our common goal of advancing CSP. CCDC for the past 30 years has been running the CSP blind test. These tests are aimed at methods developers of CSP and are designed to stimulate new and innovative ways to tackle the problem while also demonstrating to the broader community the usefulness of CSP and the current state of the art. First, we canvass our collaborators to derive a set of structures that have been experimentally analysed, but are currently not in the public domain. 
A 2D molecular structure and some experimental conditions are released, and participants have one year to make and submit their predictions using their best CSP methods. Once the submissions are in, we reveal the experimental results and compare these to the predictions. We review the outcomes and publish the findings. There's always a great amount of discussion, learnings and improvements that come from it. The system allows those building CSP methods to test and validate their technique against real-life data. We have participation from across all different areas of pharma and academia, and everybody takes a different approach, so comparing different methods like this helps all of us to learn and to push the field forwards together. We are currently planning a new test, in the process of acquiring the compounds from industry and academia that we can keep blind for a year. We will aim to start in September this year, with the test finishing one year later. In the previous blind test, there were five systems of varying complexity. We received 25 submissions from collaborations involving 52 academic groups. The systems included a rigid molecule that unusually contained no hydrogen atoms, a highly drug-like polymorphic compound, a salt hydrate, a co-forming system, and a large symmetric system. Results from groups were mixed, but some methods did succeed in prediction. Every compound was predicted. The conclusion of the test showed that re-ranking with very high in DFT was essential for success with these compounds. To keep moving the field forwards, the next test will introduce more complex systems. But we also plan to introduce a more practical angle. For some of the systems, we will release a little more experimental information in the year of the test to try to stimulate real life where experimentalists are learning and experimenting as time proceeds. We will ask participants to take this into account in their predictions. Thanks for coming along to this presentation. Hopefully, you will now be stimulated to find out more. If you are interested in the test, either as a participant or as an observer, we would love to hear from you at CCDC. On the slide are a number of ways you can contact us at CCDC to find out more. Thanks for your attention. Goodbye.